Greetings, knowledge seekers. The force is with you. So here's a common question I get from Serato users who use DVS or controllers with motorized platters. Why do my hotkeys drift? Do you have anti-drift on? Yeah, but it's still drifting. My platter's rotation cue still moves around. Turn off anti-drift. But that doesn't make sense. Try it. Okay. Whoa, that fixed it. Why is it called anti-drift then? So if you're one of those folks who use Serato with DVS or a player or controller with motorized platters and you're experiencing cue drifting, I'm going to explain why. Turning the anti-drift setting off eliminates your cue drifting. This video is brought to you by Direct Music Service. Check out the description or the pinned comment below for discount codes. So first, let's explain the mechanics of a moving platter. This goes for both turntables with a time code record or a controller or player with a motorized platter like the DDJ Rev7. Whenever a physical platter is rotating, it's improbable for it to rotate at a perfect speed. When the platter is just playing, many factors can attribute to variances in the playback speed. There's resistance in the air, friction in the motor, humidity, vibrations on the device, and even variances in the voltage can cause a rotating medium to slow down or speed up in very minor amounts. You can sometimes see this in Serato when your tempo or speed percentage value doesn't sit still. This behavior is called wow and flutter. Wow and flutter doesn't exist when you use a stationary jog wheel because the playback is digital. It only exists when you have an analog, rotating physical medium like a turntable platter. Because of wow and flutter, if you have two identical copies of a song at the same time, with the pitch set exactly at the same value, over time, they will drift apart. What's happening is what's referred to as playback drift. And it is a natural behavior of rotating platters due to wow and flutter. Because of wow and flutter, DJs have to often watch their transitions when mixing, performing tempo bends when their incoming track drifts too slow or too fast. This is part of the reality or often referred to as the fun, the work, or the art of using turntables. Now, when you turn anti-drift on on the Serato settings, the software compensates for the wow and flutter so that the playback is closer if not matching a perfect digital speed. Your DJ software corrects for variances by digitally nudging the playback faster or slower so that you have more of a digitally accurate speed while using an analog medium. This is great when you do a lot of long mixing like house music, techno music, or when you don't want to worry too much about tempo bending. You just want to focus on the fade in. By having anti-drift on, it's like having the best of both worlds, the digital playback accuracy of CDJs, but with the tactile manipulation of turntables. So why does my cue position drift relative to the physical platter when anti-drift is on? Why is it drifting when it's supposed to be anti-drifting? Well, we have to differentiate the two types of drift. There's playback drift, which we just explained, and there is cue drift, specifically the cue position drifting. Anti-drift corrects for playback drift, but can actually cause cue drift. Cue drift is when the physical platter or time code position moves away from the rotation position relative to the digital rotation position. Let me give you an example. So we have anti-drift on, and what's cool about the Rev7 is we can have a digital rotation marker and a physical one. So let's line these two up. I'm gonna put this at 12 o'clock and the hot cue's at 12 o'clock. So right now, I know there's a little bit of a delay, but their position is staying the same. When I go on three o'clock, it's three o'clock. When I go on 12 o'clock, it's 12 o'clock. So now, if I were to do some scratching, and I do some intricate scratching, I'm going slow, and then I let it go, and I bring it back, and then I let it go, and then I bring it back again, and then if you look right here, the physical marker no longer matches the digital marker. So that means physically, it no longer lines up with the same position on the song. So now let me show you what happens when you turn off anti-drift. Okay, so let's line it back up. Three o'clock, 
12 o'clock, do a little bit of scratching, let it go, then we bring it back, let it go, and then we bring it back, and it's staying where it's at. I'm going to do, scratch a little more, let it go, bring it back, and it doesn't lose its position. I can always go back to 12, slow, fast, let go, manipulate, and then it's always staying at 12. It never loses its position. So the reason why the cue drifting happens when anti-drift is on is because the corrections that anti-drift imposes can often throw the syncing of the digital rotation position from the physical rotation position. Remember how I said that it's digitally nudging to compensate for wow and flutter? Well, when that happens, it actually offsets the sync of the physical and digital rotations. Most DJs may not notice any cue drifting with anti-drift on. And oftentimes, basic occasional scratching may not throw the rotation position by a significant amount, if at all. However, if you do a lot of intricate scratching where you slow it down and speed it up, and slow it down and speed it up and then let it go, then wind it back, then you might notice that small amount of drifting and it could grow over time. Folks who beat juggle can really experience the cue drifting. And that can get annoying when your physical marker doesn't line up with the actual cue point. For those folks, you most likely want anti-drift turned off. Now, anti-drift on Serato DJ Pro used to only be applicable to DVS using timecode records. It was only fairly recently where it became applied to motorized digital platters as well. If you're using a stationary jog wheel like CDJs or most controllers, anti-drift doesn't really do anything. So to summarize, if you do long mixing and moderate to no scratching, or you want perfect digitally accurate playback speed, go ahead and turn anti-drift on. But if you are into intricate scratching and beat juggling, pretty much you're a battle DJ or a battle style club DJ, or if you just want a more authentic to vinyl response and playback, turn anti-drift off. Also, while you're at it, turn key lock off. Pitch in time for you folks who upgraded your key lock. Then you can really sound like vinyl on your DJ software. All right, well, if you wanna learn how to scratch to house music, Follow this video right here. Really appreciate you for watching. The force is with you always.